Hey Slick Dealers, this is a which one between two pairs of shoes, but because of COVID, I don't have another person to co-host. So today, my co-host will be me. Hello you, hello me. Today we're comparing the Adidas Ultra Boost 20 with the brand new Adidas Ultra Boost 21. In our Which One series, we compare a top of the line product with the best deal we've seen on a comparable product on Slick Deals. Today, I've got the Ultra Boost 21, Adidas' redesigned top of the line running shoe. And I've got the Ultra Boost 20, which recently went on sale on the Adidas website for an unbeatable 6750. But we're gonna put the two head to head and see if the 21s are a big enough improvement to justify the extra cost to pay full retail. Or if you're better off snagging a great deal on a pair of 20s. So let's do it. Are you ready, Pete? I am, Pete. No. This is not a sponsored video. However, Slick Deals may receive a small commission if you make a purchase through the links below. So let's get started. First, a little background. When the Ultra Boost was originally released, it was revered by sneakerheads and runners alike as being sort of a holy grail shoe. Now, as competitors like Asics and Hoka and Nike have their own top variants that are like dominating for the top position, the Ultra Boost has kind of shifted in popularity to more of the lifestyle realm. But Adidas is still competing, releasing updates to the line regularly. Beginning in 2019, they started updating the Ultra Boost line yearly, and in 2021, they released the most radical redesign yet, the Ultra Boost 21. With an MSRP of $180, this shoe sits at the top of the price pyramid for the Adidas line. Comparatively, Slick Deals has seen some pretty awesome deals on the previous model, the Ultra Boost 20. I mean, look at this. Getting a pair at $67.50 is about as slick a deal as you can find. So why am I talking to you about this? I'm not some professional athlete or a foot doctor. I do like shoes though, and I never considered myself a runner. But since I've moved to Los Angeles, COVID lockdown has seriously limited my exercise options. So as I've leaned more into running and been telling people that I've been regularly running six or seven miles at one time, they've responded impressed and surprised. And so I start to think to myself, maybe you are a runner. I've been on some runs with both the 20s and the 21s now and can say with confidence that I know both the shoes pretty well. Let's talk about how the shoes are similar. First, they're both Ultra Boost designs. That means that Adidas has packed the sole of the shoe with its proprietary Boost material. Boost is this cushiony, rubbery material that Adidas uses for their top of the line shoes. And it looks like styrofoam, but it's really more like a bunch of small rubber balls that have been melted together. Adidas uses Boost on a lot of different shoes, like from the R1 to even high-end designer collabs, like. Alexander Wang or Yeezy, but Ultra Boost has remained Adidas' top performance technology even with more recent releases like the 4D Souls. Now that you've got some background on the Ultra Boost, let's get into direct comparisons. First, we'll go over design, initial comfort, performance, and price, and then we'll decide if the 21s outclass the 20s so much so that the average consumer might want to consider getting the higher end model. The Ultra Boost 20s, which are the black pair, look closer to the original Ultra Boost design. Your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> they feature a mainly prime knit upper with what I think is a neoprene heel and these plastic bits for support. The sole is mostly all boost and the premium continental hard rubber on the bottom is this web pattern that's pretty much been the Ultra Boost standard since they've started. The 21s are definitely different. We've noticed how chunky the heels are on some other brands top running shoes nowadays and that's where the design difference in the Ultra Boost 21 come in. Adidas says they've packed 6% more boost into the shoe and you can definitely see the difference between the pairs on the back side. Adidas also says these are prime knit but with how tightly woven this fabric appears to me I was kind of surprised to hear that. For the 21s, Adidas brought back more of that plastic heel support and added in plastic here on the sole, which I'm guessing is also for more support. In another radical design shift, Adidas redesigned the bottom of the sole, and while it still does feature continental rubber, I think this is the first Ultra Boost shoe with a totally different pattern along the bottom. For design, we have to give it to the 21s. The updated chunky heel may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I like it, 
and it's industry standard for performance shoes at this point. Nothing to complain about here with the 20s. When I got them, they were the most comfortable running shoe I'd ever worn. They form to your feet with that sock-like feel, the prime knit. The neoprene makes the heel feel comfortable. And for an everyday shoe, you can't go wrong with a pair of Ultra Boost 20s. But what about the 21s? The 21s, in terms of comfort, are no exception. They definitely feel great. The prime knit hugs your feet tighter, and the feet feel more secure in the shoe. And that results in a different feeling on the foot. It's not necessarily better or worse, it just depends on what you want from a shoe. Because the 20s are looser on your foot, they seem better suited for an everyday shoe, while the 21s definitely feel more geared towards performance. Right. The only thing I'm concerned with is that on the 21s, the addition of the hard plastic on the bottom of the sole, it hasn't been an issue yet, but I'm worried that over time the boost could break down and that hard plastic could start digging into my feetsies. <laughs> I've had that happen before on another pair of shoes, so I'm just a little paranoid. So for comfort, it's basically a tie right now, but we're gonna give it to the 20s because they don't make us feel concerned. I think the Ultra Boost shoes in general are built to last. The continental rubber on the underside is thick and seems to be ready to weather long distances on hard surfaces. That said, when I started going on longer runs with the 20s, I noticed my feet feeling a little fatigued. Exactly. And that's what convinced me to buy the 21s. I felt like the added boost on the heel might give me a little extra something that I was missing. And you were right. The 21s help relax some of that fatigue and I haven't had any issues running with them whatsoever. Yep. The 21s have been so far the best shoe that I have ever run in and I feel pretty confident in them. Well, I feel confident in the 20s. If you interrupt me again, I'm gonna pop you. So for performance, the 21s win, and all that extra boost results in more feet support. As I mentioned before, the 21s are brand new, and that means you're gonna be hard pressed to find a deal on them. On top of that, Adidas has exclusions for sales on their premium products, so you aren't likely to get in on a deal unless you finagle something. Like how Newegg was selling a $50 Adidas gift card with a bonus $15 credit. That's how I bought these and it saved me 30 bucks. Comparatively, the Ultra Boost 20s are gonna be a lot easier to find on sale right now since they are the previous model year. I'd say that any price below $120 is worth it, and we've seen them drop as low as $67.50 a pair, which was one of the best deals we've ever seen on a pair of performance running shoes on sleep deals. But keep in mind, you're gonna be limited on colorways and size availability when you shop for discounts on these. Adidas is a really popular brand on slick deals, so definitely set up a deal alert or check regularly. Just keep in mind that a site-wide sale on Adidas probably won't help if you're looking for Ultra Boost specifically, since they're usually excluded from those discounts. So, obviously, the Ultra Boost 20s went on price. You can't beat 67.50. That's like so low, it's basically a price mistake. This is a pretty simple conclusion. The Ultra Boost 21s are a great shoe and definitely show the 20s up in terms of performance. But at $180, we can't recommend them to everyone. That's a lot of dough to dish out on one pair of shoes. Are you a serious runner? Then spring for the 21s, your feet will thank you. And when we say serious, we mean you're averaging like five mile runs or more. Everybody else, just go with the 20s. They're also great. And if you can get a pair for less than $100, you've lucked out. This has been Which One? I'm Pete, and I'm Pete. Tell us in the comments which product should go head to head next. And if you paid full price, you weren't really trying. That's my line. <laughs>